So welcome everyone. I'm excited to share with you this tool that I found a couple of years ago and I've been using um, for the last year. Uh, I did use it a lot, almost daily um, for my studio, one of my studios classes that I teach with fourth and fifth graders. But I did also use it in Jumpstart with first and second graders. And um, it is something that you can adapt and use from pre-K all the way through grade 12. And uh, my name is Laura, and I'm a digital teacher librarian. Currently, I'm at the Advanced Learning Academy at the Fox Tech campus, where I serve fourth through 12th grade. But um, this past summer, I worked on the our Euclid campus with the younger students as well. And I also have a background um, in elementary librarianship and elementary teaching as well. So I kind of have uh, a lot of experience across the board. Um, I'd love to see, I know someone posted they were at Neil in pre-K to three. It'd be great to kind of see what grade levels we have here. So if you want to put that in the chat, that way I can definitely make sure to um, include ideas for all the different uh, grade levels and programs and departments that are represented here. Um, but I do want to talk to you today about Adobe Cloud Express and how uh, specifically I use that to address literacy um, and using that through storytelling, which is one of my favorite things. I know I'm a story person. I love stories. I learn better through stories. I learn math and science better through stories. And when I was in the classroom, especially teaching, um, <clears throat> even math and science, using stories was really a, a big part of me because the brain understands those processes. And so I would teach the story of a water molecule, the story of nitrogen, and it would, um, those cycles and processes are also part of how I use storytelling across the grade levels. Um, so I wanna start out with what, what is Adobe Cloud Express? So I found it a couple of years ago. I think um, Ernest Gonzalez is the one who sh first shared it with, with me. And it's a platform for creating digital media you might have heard of Adobe Spark before. So Adobe Spark uh, used to be um, its own app and Adobe ended up rolling together three of its apps. It's uh, Adobe Spark was which where it was uh, you used to create videos, but they also added in their Photoshop and their dig some of their other digital products into Adobe Cloud Express. And um, so now uh, it, it's a great platform to create all kinds of digital media um, so you can use it to create flyers, posters, social media posts. So if you are uh, do work with your school's web page, uh, Facebook page, Instagram page, or you have a, a one for your class, this is a great way to create those. Um, create really cool seesaw messages um, and all kinds of different content. So uh, it is a great alternative to Canva. Vengage and S'more. So I know right now there's a lot of discussion. Canva is not currently an approved app in the district. So we're not supposed to be using that one with students. But um, after getting into Adobe Cloud Express, especially after they rolled over and merged the other apps into it, I don't feel the need to use Canva like I once did. Um, and then I know if you were a librarian in the district and used Vengage a lot, um, we lost access to that as well as S'more. And again, you when once I saw all of the new features in Adobe Cloud Express, my uh, fears about moving forward without those tools kind of went away because I think there's some great stuff in Adobe Cloud Express. So that's basically what it is. And we'll get in and we'll start exploring after I go through a few slides. So <clears throat> the next part is the who, who can use it. So this is great because it is available to all SAISD teachers, staff, and students. Um, so if you're visiting us from outside of SAISD, I would definitely check with your district to see if you have a version. There is an uh, Adobe Education version right now that that is what the district is currently using. There's also a free version for home use. Uh, you can use that if you have a, a business or you wanna have some cool social media posts, you're working on being an influencer, um, teacher talk or whatever it is that you're working on. Uh, and there are also uh, paid versions for professionals that you can use as well. But again, the, if you're an SAISD, you have access to this tool for free. And we'll get into how to um, get into that in a minute. So where is it or where can you use it? So currently it is available on the school iPads, in the Chromebooks, laptops, 
personal devices. It does work on all of those. Uh, this is the one part that I always have some people come back to me and say like, I, it wasn't working. I couldn't get any of my students to log in or I couldn't get in. Um, the important part is that if you're an SCISD, you need to go through ClassLink. So you don't wanna go directly to Adobe, which I, is where I've had some teachers come back and say it wasn't working. So if you go in through ClassLink, there is an app for Adobe Creative Cloud Express and that's what you wanna go. Um, and then the second tricky part to that, and this part I do have to go through kind of slowly with my students because I've got those students that are just eager and they just get right in and then they get stuck is um, making sure that you choose, when you log in, you choose Google to log in through Google and that it'll ask you if it's a personal or an enterprise enrollment and make sure you choose that enterprise enrollment because it'll, it'll stay on the bottom, school or business. But I know a lot of my students get tripped up and they'll hit personal and then they'll tell me I can't get in and we have to kind of go back um, to make sure they get in that enterprise enrollment. And so uh, if you are not part of the SAISD and you're here visiting, you can go um, and through uh, the link that's there, adobe.com education express, and that it allows you to create an account through there if you're a free user or a paid user, that's how you would access. Um, but again, for if you're in SAISD, you wanna make sure you go in through ClassLink because that's the way it's gonna auto pull your login credentials in. Otherwise you're gonna get stuck. And so why? <clears throat> why this instead of Canva? Why this instead of iMovie or Apple Clips? Um, so one thing I like is that this auto saves in the cloud. So there is no need to keep the same device. I know I had a lot of issues when I was doing movies with students on iPads that were using iMovie or Apple Clips. They always had to get the same device again. If their device was broken, they had to start over again. If it got wiped for some reason, um, <clears throat> it would be frustrating, especially if you have multiple classes. If you're uh, a specials teacher that has, sees multiple rotations, it, it's frustrating because you'll have students go in and mess with other students' work on an iPad if they're sharing that device. Um, and that could be frustrating, but uh, Adobe, since it's in the cloud, you log in on one device, you log out, you go to another device, you log in, all your work is in there, which I really like. Um, students can also share projects with each other, so you can have multiple students working on the same project, which I really like. It builds that collaborative nature about it. Of course, I like that it's supported by SEISD, which means I'm going to get help from ed tech if I run into issues. Um, <clears throat> And, uh, you know, and from IT as well, if there's issues on pushing it out to a device, they're going to push it out right away. Um, so I really like that. And then, of course, the, the main part is that it is a super easy learning curve for students. I <laughs> used it with some students and I didn't really know what I was doing. And then they immediately were like, oh, this is this is how look, you can add music and oh, look, I found this picture online. I'm going to use that. And they naturally because it's so similar to a lot of other platforms, just pick it up and they get going and they fine tune things. I know that we had students adding music to the background and then they were trying to add their voice on top of it. And then the music was louder than their voice. And you know, all I had to say was like, there's gotta be a way to fix that. And sure enough, just a couple experimentation, students figured it out on their own. I didn't have to know, I didn't have to be the expert. They could, take it and roll with it and they could then become the experts and teach others and teach me. And so that's the thing that I really liked about this platform as well. Um, when could you use this for literacy especially? I'm going to show you some ways that this is a really great way to draft stories. Um, there are some pre-built in, in already um, tools that let you, like there's some templates that are already in there that lets students build out and draft a story and have all of the elements of a good story together, um, especially with sequence. Um, it's a really great way to retell familiar stories. When I did Jumpstart in July of 2021, I did this with first and second graders. And what we did was we um, read familiar stories. We read a lot of folk tales, a lot of fairy tales, and then we had students retell those in Adobe Spark so that they could process that, um, practice that sequencing, practice that retelling, the main idea um, going through. Uh, there are also lots of tools in there that will let you discuss a theme and mood and purpose. I'm gonna show you some of those templates because it actually um, 
helps students kind of visualize different forms of writing and different audiences and purposes. And then it's a great way to discuss sequence and plot as well, because like I said, those templates, a lot of them just are naturally laid out to make that more seamless for students. And how? So <clears throat> I want us to have some time to check it out. You can follow along with me, but if you want to open a separate browser as well, you can do that if you have that capability. Um, so if you are in SAISD, then you can go to class link and you would look for one of these two buttons. These are both still in my class link. The old one, which is Spark, it looks like this big SP. And um, this one over here is the new one, Adobe Creative Cloud Express. I'm sure that at some point the SP Spark one is going to drop out of the catalog. But I know for my students that had, we used it, literally used it all year. And then in January, it switched over. <laughs> and so they had a panic and were like, it's gone, it's not here. I don't have Spark anymore. Um, and I remember I made a frantic call downtown and was like, is it blocked? Did they stop, you know, did we stop paying for it? And they're like, no, 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 it changed. And so they put the, they showed me the new link, but then they actually added this one back in, I think to give some time to transition. So, um, you may want to check that out to see. Um, and I know a lot of my students just like search, you know, because they know how to do this. They searched up and they added it back in for some of them. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my class link so I can show you. Um, here we are on Adobe Creative Cloud. And I'm going to remind you again that you always want to choose to log in with Google and then choose the enterprise account. Um, you, for some reason, it doesn't, uh, sometimes it asks me that. It doesn't ask me every single time. Um, but probably every four or five times that I log in, it will ask me to, to choose that Google and enterprise account again. So this is when you log in, this is the platform that you will see. And there's a lot of different buttons here to get you started. Um, there's an alert bell. So if someone shares something with you, you're going to get a notification that, you know, someone shared something with you. So that's, an, that's important um, to know that that's up there. This, these are just your settings that are up here. Um, and then you can also look at other apps that are available. Um, so these are things that may or may not be available depending on your access level, but there are different um, available ones in here. And of course, this button will take you back to the Adobe homepage. So the way it's laid out is that we have some, there are some templates here at the beginning. Um, so you can see if you're starting something, you're like, I wanna make a presentation or I'm trying to make a poster. Uh, I want to make a journal entry, um, something that you can throw up on your, your board or um, drop into your student's Canvas or Google account. Um, flyers, if you scroll through, uh, infographics are in here, which is great. Um, that's a great place where you can pull um, things that you can share with your students as well. Um, they even have some cool lesson plan and report card formats, which are pretty cool. There's a lot of education pieces. The one that I wanted to show you that I used a lot, and I just want to also make sure that I tell you that I am by no means an expert in this platform. It does a lot more than what I'm using it for. And I know that. I know um, if you have used this before and have other ways you use that, please put that in the chat because I'd love to read through that later because I want to learn from you all as much as um, hopefully I'm teaching you a tiny little fraction of this tool. Um, but the one that I used the most this year was this slideshow. This is the one where it makes it really easy to create uh, a lot of different platforms for writing and from, for storytelling. So if I'm a fresh student coming in here, I can just click on this slideshow and I wanna give it a title. So if I'm gonna say my story or if you're doing a specific, you know, if you already have a name or you wanna do um, Hansel and Gretel or you're doing some sort of actual, you know, retelling of a, of a book, you can do that. Um, name it. I always encourage the naming because if, if your students are like mine, they'll have 30,000 untitled documents. <laughs> they can never find the same one again. Um, and this is the part that I find so powerful is that it says pick a story template or start from scratch. So I have students that want to start from scratch, but I love that we have these already laid out. Like, so if you're a writing teacher, you can focus on these different formats. So promoting an idea. So we, we know, I know that this is a type of writing that students often struggle with about creating change, moving an audience to action, that um, process writing that we have, or that 
um, type of writing where we're trying to give uh, an idea across. Um, so if you click this open, you'll see it's going to give students an already laid out template that they kind of fill in to really organize their thoughts. So when I come in here, you'll see that it already tells me to like lay out the setting. Then on the next slide, I want to do the problem. And it even gives me this, like what problem does the audience or who you're helping struggle with today? Um, then it tells you to describe a better world where this problem doesn't exist. <clears throat> and then you've got here, it goes through the whole process of sharing your idea. How will it improve your life after it becomes reality? So you go through this process and on each of these slides, the students can either add video so they can record video um, prior to or during. They can add text so it can just be writing. Um, photos or even icons, which are you know, kind of like emojis. And so um, what I really um, had students do is you can see, you can open and pull in from your library. Um, but if you're doing photos as well, there's a little bit more options. You can actually upload photos or you can go through Adobe stock photos as well. So that was a lot of fun. I'd have students that would find photos online and bring them in, but there's a lot of stock photos as well that are available. And they can actually add more than one. So if you find a photo you like and you click on it over here, it's gonna put it in the background. And then you can actually layer on top of that, you can add some text on top of it. So if I click on this button, um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm giving you some wrong information. You click the layout here and you can actually split the screen a little bit and add text to the other side or have more than one. Um, and then something that I really like because I definitely have students that were not comfortable with a lot of writing, but you press and hold. And if you press and hold, it will record your voice. And then you let go and it will, students can listen to that slide go through. Um, <clears throat> and so they can go through and fill this out and tell their story. Uh, as they go through. Um, and so they, they have this layout, these layouts here that they can change. They can change the theme. Um, they can resize it. So if you're trying to do a, a video for Instagram, you can make it square. You can keep it widescreen for a laptop. Um, and then over here, we also have the music where they can um, add the music, turn it off, add different um, types. I like that um, this was helpful to my students because it talks about uplifting music. And so we talk about matching the music to the theme so they can go through and, and choose different types of music that are available free and copyright free, or they can even add their own music as well. So they go through and that's just one um, of those. The only, the, the only hiccup that I come through with students on this is um, if you notice, I just hit allow or block on the microphone. I have a lot of students who will immediately block it and then later on tell me, oh, my audio doesn't work. I need a new device. And so I have to just go back to their, help them go to their settings and unblock that audio or the video on there as well. <clears throat> so what I want to make sure if I go back as well, I can go back and see the different templates that are available. So I'm, if I just go back to that top, left corner, it's always going to go back. And so I can start a new one if you want to explore the tell what happened. Um, I love that it, that we have a hero's journey. So that's, you know, a different one. We even have show and tell. And we keep going through. Um, oh, sorry about that. You can go through and do all the different templates with which have different types of writing. Um, <clears throat> and so this is the, the a challenge one, so overcoming a challenge. And so, you know, it gives you these prompt points. The students can record if they're not comfortable with writing. It gives you that support for a lot of your students to be creative, to do the talent storytelling, to show that they know how to lay out a story and um, tell it in, in a sequential order that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> without having to have the written skills or that, that whole back of I'm, I'm, I just can't write it. 
Um, because if I know if, for a lot of my students, if I tell them to write the story, they're just going to shut down and that's it. I've lost them. And so this gives them that opportunity to come back and do the project with us. Um, so I had a lot more participation when I was doing it this way. So I'm going to go back a little bit um, <clears throat> to show you also that you can um, start from scratch as well. So students don't have to have it laid out. They can also do this start from scratch. And when they do this, what I like is that you can put in the elements that you've already laid out. So student, it's just going to have slide number one in the credits. Um, I love that credits too. As a librarian, of course, I love students to include any resources they use. So if they brought in photos or brought in music from outside the platform, they can add it there. Um, and then if students want to add elements, they just click and we'll add additional slides as well. So as many as they need, and they can adjust these to tell a story as well. When students have finished, uh, they can, this is, this play button will play that individual slide, but then the play button down here will play the entire program that they've, um, the entire video that they've created, um, and it'll play it sequentially. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, and then they have some other options. So they can download it here and uh, download, it takes, a, it does sometimes take a minute. So once they download it, it'll download it as an MP4 so they can share that out or drop it into their Seesaw or Google Drive. Um, they can share it. So if you want to share it with um, your Google Drive, they can send it from here to their Google Drive. They can invite you as the teacher or someone else to look at it, review it if it's not quite ready um, and, and copy the link. So that's another place to do it. And then of course, over here is another place to invite because sometimes students don't always know what to do, but that plus with the, the that's a universal symbol that again, students just figure out and they add each other to their videos, they can. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go back here. And once students have begun working on something, uh, I always wanna redirect them to this projects button. So that's how you can find things you've already started. So you'll have yours, you'll have shared with you and you'll have any recent ones you've been working on. Um, so if you if I scroll down, you can see that there are some here. Uh, these are some ones that were from Jumpstart and I have to remember that some of these were um, entering first graders and entering second graders that had been at home all year. And so you can see that, that what we did here was that students actually drew the pictures for their story and then we added them in and then they told the story. So that is a, a thing that we, you can do as well as this student just drew each picture. Um, so this was low tech to high tech. And if I press over here, we can do a little demo. Can you all hear that? Yes. Okay, perfect. We're not hearing the retail. We just heard like a noise before when you selected play, but I don't hear a retail. Oh, sorry. Um, <clears throat> so just so you can see that, uh, that is uh, basically how it works. This was a silly story. A student was making up his own story um, and entering first grader. So um, you can go through and see how it works here once students have uploaded all their pictures. Um, so these are just some samples. And then for this one, they wrote each piece. And then at the end, I also had them draw their own author for their credits they drew themselves to add it to the end. Um, so we tried to add in some things that we did a little art lesson with the art teacher. Um, and so that was their self-portrait as well, which we added into our storytelling. So we kind of collaborated there. Um, <clears throat> So if we go back again home, so you can see 
all these different things um, and our projects that we're working on. The other thing that you can do, um, I just wanted to make sure you could see all the different posters, the journals, the flyers that are available. You can search templates as well. So I just searched in book in here just to see what would pop up. And you can see there's a lot of different things that you could do. So students could use this to create posters, advertising a book, or uh, use this to create a book review. They could use this um, <clears throat> to create, like to find a quote from a book that they're reading or a story that they're reading and put the quote on there and create an image to have um, <clears throat> that. This is a great place if you want students to create anchor charts. Um, I know we, uh, like I, that was a big thing for my class. So you can see here, it's a back to school checklist, but if I start with this and I create this, you can edit this as well, instead of it being a back to school checklist, it could be, you know, materials you need to have in the classroom or it could be steps to solving a problem. So you could change and edit these as well for your own purposes in the classroom or your students can create them if you wanna have student created anchor charts and um, infographics as well. So it's a lot of fun. You can see there's a lot of different texts and things, design assets, backgrounds that they can add in. They can, um, the background for my slideshow that I have here is from Adobe Creative Cloud. So I don't have to worry about, you know, going to some outside tool, it's all integrated in here and I can pull it out and then I can use it as a background. Um, so there's just so many ideas in this platform that I wanted to share. Um, <clears throat> and these are just some things that I came up with, but I'd love to see you guys add, that have some time to explore and add your own ideas. So um, this is something you could do in Anatomy of a Fictional Character. I think I saw um, on here, there was a, an infographic that was a person with, um, you know, around the outside edges, you could add elements of um, a character. There are tons of Venn diagrams, compare and contrast diagrams in there that you can edit and change. Uh, this would be a great place for students to design a new cover for a book or a story or design a cover for their own stories. Um, publishing their personal narratives and creating new stories that they're doing. Again, doing that video retelling of stories for all of our kids that um, are, are struggling to embrace writing at the moment. Um, book recommendations and book trailers, this is a great place to put that. Um, <clears throat> student created anchor charts, like we I mentioned before, I think this is a good place. Uh, doing the lists for ideas, so story students can even use this to create a list of like things I wanna write about um, or books I've read or math facts that I know uh, so that they can create those charts to share um, on their own or with family. Uh, quote posters, like putting those quotations. Um, there's a lot of places they can use this for collaging as well. So there's a bunch of templates. Um, if I search for my um, template in the templates where I go to discover up here, I can search for collage and students can create a collage of pictures uh, from the class or from um, the year or from a project or to represent a, a project that they've done. And you can see that I've layered these two collages layered on top. So there's all, all kinds of layering that you can do in here as well. Um, <clears throat> um, this is a great place if you wanna do fake social media posts for characters or have students create, um, you know, like the retell a story using Instagram posts. That would be something that they could do, especially, but yeah, parent communication um, <clears throat> for clubs, for pizza parties, for things like that. I love that idea as well. Um, text features, using the infographics for test, text features. That's a great one too. I love that idea. Um, <clears throat> and there are other things that I haven't explored yet. I'm, there's a lot of things that I was trying to explore. Um, so one thing that I did discover is that in most of the formats, so if I go back here to home and um, I'm gonna take a flyer, I can 
create my flyer and I can change, you know, the, I can add my school logo. I can add my, um, <clears throat> I can add like the basics and then I can actually share that template with others. I haven't figured out how to share a slideshow as a template yet, um, but I have been able to um, create flyers and, and change those and create a template in a template library. And then all you have to do is share that library with others and they would be able to change the, the template. So if there's newsletters that you want to have pre-formatted and then have um, share that with your team or your grade level and they wanna just like edit it basically, you know, I know like the, um, at my daughter's school, they, they had it like, you know, a second grade, I think they called it the Lemonade Express or something. And so every teacher had their own version where they just changed their name and maybe a couple little things inside of it and sent that out every week. So that's something that you could do as well. Um, share that template and then each teacher can make a copy and then share it out. Um, <clears throat> something that I would like to get into more is doing those templates and sharing, seeing how we can share templates with students, which is something that I'm not an expert on. That's like my next learning curve, the thing I wanna learn how to do because then if you could create a slideshow um, with the story elements that you want included or the format, um, it'd be great to be able to share that, uh, create a new one and put that in to share with your students, which is something I still need to learn, but I'm working on it. <clears throat> so again, like I said, I'm not an expert in this platform. I really like it. I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited to see um, how many more things I can do with it, but I still have a lot to, to learn on this platform as well. I just am excited about what it can do. Um, so when I have libraries here, this is something I did do is I created a library. So I created one for, for my campus and then here, um, so I can go to libraries, I can create a library. So if you wanna do it um, team fourth grade, I would create that library and that's where I could save any of those flyers or newsletters that I do. And then I could just share that library with my team. So if you are here as a instructional coach, um, <clears throat> that is something that you could do. And then I can go over here and I can share. Um, I always, sometimes I like to do these little tours too, but I'm skip for now. So I can share this with my team and I can invite, or I can uh, make a public link it looks like as well. So I can add in my team members there as well. So that is a fun element um, to make just things easier, which is something that I've always had a hard time when teachers try to share things with me in Canva and I try to print it or something, it comes out weird. So this one, again, you know, it's gonna be supported by SAISD um, <clears throat> and you can see how that works. So those were some of my ideas. Um, I'm gonna quickly show you here that we also have more, like there are some general tips. Um, I always like to let students explore. So giving them that freedom um, to have some time to just see what you can do in the platform first, um, be open to not knowing it all. So like I said, at the beginning, students were adding music. I didn't know all about that. Um, they taught me a lot about that, those platforms and then less is more. So again, like I learned just this one part, the slideshow part, that's where I, you know, shared with students and I got to know that part. So don't feel like you have to do all of it all at once. Pick something that you know you could use and then learn that part. Um, share with me as well. <clears throat> Adobe has these online tutorials that you can do. So I put that here as well. And then I also included a link to a, a blog that has a lot of good ideas uh, for using this as well. And so um, I added that in there as well so that you could um, see that. So I'm gonna go back to the chat because I'd love to see if you guys have any other ideas uh, about how you can use this or if you wanna even just chime in and share your ideas out loud, I'd love that too. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna. When I was in the classroom, I really used this tool like a deal for creating the types of flyers uh, that were campus-wide. So when we were having like, you know, it's literacy night in about five minutes, I really could create like a really visually um, capturing 
type infographic or flyer to be able to share. And it was a good spot for me too, because it took about five minutes to make it, but in the doing it several times, got me comfortable and familiar with the tools inside of Adobe. So it was just a good start. And then I was able to go from that little flyer then to applying it in classroom use. It was helpful. I like that. So starting it, starting it maybe with just internal stuff that you need to do anyway, and then getting familiar before you branch it out to kids too. That's, that's good. Um, I got stuck on how do I get myself unstuck? So I think that I had to go, like I logged all the way out. I, I did that before too. And I think I had to log all the way out of class link and then I went back in and it reprompted me. So you might try that. Um, if not, I think that IT can unstick you, but <laughs> I had to like do that, like where you clear out your cookies and stuff. So it didn't remember what I tried to do the first time. It should, it should be able to do that. Has anyone else used this tool before? No? I've Besides used it. You have. I've used it. Um, I, I introduced it to the students so that they could create a commercial to advertise the products we were making. Oh, perfect. I love that idea. Yeah, so this is the, I first got introduced to it, I think when, uh, maybe maybe I got introduced to it before, but um, I didn't really use it until last year when they were talking about the film festival and doing that um, promote an idea was the topic last year. And so that um, was where it was so easy. Like my students made those videos <laughs> in like one class sitting of an hour. And so they were able to enter the film festival and they were so proud of themselves for entering the film festival. And so this year I had more students participate in that. And it was so such an easy tool to use for them that they could create and participate in these things. So um, I had several students use it this year again for the this year's film festival. And you'll, you know, they they just get excited about that, participating in those things. Um, and same with the, um, so I know next year they're also going to do that. So it's a, it's a good way to do that. Students can participate in the 92nd Newberry, which is retelling a Newberry story. And so um, I had some students start during the intercession in January this year. We didn't quite finish, but hopefully we'll come back to next year. Um, just because I didn't have a consistency in attendance during that time. So I had um, students that started pro, um, some of their 92nd Newberries and then they didn't come back for the rest of the week. So. We didn't quite finish that one, but this year, um, that's probably what we'll do. Oh, I like, so the, anyone doing the three through five summer camp, you can. Do that for the digital media project. That's it's going so fast that they would miss that correct way to log in. <laughs> and then again, they would automatically hit block on the microphone and block on the camera. So before I let them even open their computers, I went through those steps with them because I was like, hey, this is what happened before. These are the things you need to read first. And so it's a good for them to practice that anyway. Um, so uh, I would definitely recommend that you let them know way ahead before they even try to get in to um, check that enterprise enrollment and that login through Google. And also to make sure that if it asks them to use their camera or microphone, you hit allow for those. Because um, those are the two, those are the really the main two things that I ran into with students using this tool. Are there any other questions or ideas or things that came up that you're thinking about? I, I love the idea of allowing uh, students to explore first, because uh, when when you do that is when they begin to learn on their own. So, but that's powerful. That's a great tip. Yeah, just letting them explore all the different music that's in there and the different, you know, pictures and they they knew a lot. I mean, they just picked up on it so fast. Like I said, they were making videos and. Better than you know, students who'd worked for months on ones on other tools in the past. So, especially because it lays out, especially if you pick a template, it lays out those elements of a good story. Um, I know when I would let students just like record freely on their own, sometimes it would just get off track, 
it would stop making sense. They just go on tangents um, and never come back <laughs> to the actual story. And so having those templates to really like lays it out that this makes a good story. This makes a good sequence. Here's a be good beginning, middle, and an end, you know, wrapping things up in an arc. Um, and, you know, you can customize them as well. Like I said, if you're doing this with high school, you can, you know, go and say like, which slide is your climax, which one is, you know, the denouement and all those, you can add those vocabulary in there as well so that they have that, all those pieces as they tell a story. Um, and, you know, then, then they get in that habit, hopefully, and it transfers into their writing as well. I really like the way that the variety of things students can create utilize the same skill set. So if they start with making a flyer or a graphic or something like that, they pick up the how to, but then they jump over to, okay, now let's make a presentation or a video, but the ways in which they edit are still the same. So it really gives them an opportunity to use a small skill set, but to create a great variety of, of uh, publication. Yes. And I know when we did some of the videos, they'd be like, well, I need a picture of a farm, um, you know, that's raining because I'm going to do, um, you know, I want to talk about a flood and the crops were lost because of the storm. And we couldn't find a video uh, or a image that was in the free stock photos of the storm. So they just took a picture of a farm and then they added this, the storm cloud icons on top of it. And so it was like the whole idea of that layering piece too was a lot of fun for them. So they were able to like, you know, and that was something I didn't even tell them. I was like, well, what can we do? And they're like, oh no, I, wait, I got this. <laughs> and they were like, let me just take this and then I'll add on top of it. And look, now I have what I wanted. And so it was really good to see that. And some of them even took, you know, were able to figure out how to, to do the, you know, Apple, uh, use the Apple pencils on top of an iPad and, and add layers with that as well. So, um. We mostly used Chromebooks this year. Um, I did iPads in the summer with the students, um, which we did find the iPads are better if you're having students take pictures of, you know, art that they're done and they're going to add that in. Um, that usually worked better on an iPad, but I love that. App smashing, yes. <laughs> I love the app smashing too. So that, that, you know, they can have, bring stuff in from other things. So they can create little video clips in iMovie or chatter picks um, or those other apps stop, that they already know. Stop motion. I did a, um, when we were doing film festival this year, I did with a group of fourth graders, we did clay and then stop motion and then took the stop motion pieces and threw them in Adobe and then added some different narrations and other features just to introduce them to different tools and then allowed them to make the choice where they did their final product. Um, but it was wonderful. And I think the power in this is that it's so easily student led and the students were able to come back and teach one another. So in all seriousness, it was a genuine 21st century learning environment that was student led. I just simply said, Hey, here's some tools you can use, go check them out. And they were all over it. So I, I did very little work. It was out, it was pretty outstanding. And they created some terrific videos and flyers and presentations. It was good. Yeah, exactly. I think that that's the thing that I always try to remind teachers that are like hesitant to start is like, don't worry about being the expert. Don't worry about having to know all of it. Just letting them know it's there. They'll figure out the rest and giving them that freedom. They like, we have to give that trust in them because they'll figure it out and they'll go places with it that we wouldn't even think about going. <laughs> so I'm always surprised. And I think that like that letting go, that just let them explore and they'll figure it out. They'll find new ways to use it that I wouldn't, I'm sure I haven't even thought of yet. So thank you all for coming. I think we're at time. Yes, Laura, thank you so much. It's been amazing. I learned a lot. So I'm gonna be using this program next year, definitely. <laughs> Um, I placed the link for the attendance and also the information about the presenter and the and the session. So please uh, complete that and uh, we'll see you soon in another session.